Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about agrobacterium and the disease caused by this agrobacterium that is crown gall disease. So, without any delay, let's start the video. So, agrobacterium. So, this is a bacteria which is present in soil and it is a gram negative bacteria. And this agrobacterium, it is the genus. And there are three kinds of agrobacterium species which are agrobacterium tumefacian which cause the crown gall disease in the plants. Second one agrobacterium rhizogenes which cause the hairy root disease. And third species that is agrobacterium radiobacter. So this species it is a avirulent strain means it doesn't cause any disease. So these three are the species of this agrobacterium genus. Now, let's discuss about this agrobacterium tumefacian. So, this agrobacterium tumefacian, this species, it causes the crown gall disease in the plants. So, how this species causes the disease? So, it will be clear in further slides. So, first of all, basic about this agrobacterium tumefacian species. So, this species, it contains two kinds of DNA. One is plasmid, which is known as the Ti plasmid. Here the Ti stands for tumor inducing plasmid because this is that plasmid which is responsible for the crown gall disease. So that's why this plasmid is known as Ti plasmid. And beside this Ti plasmid, there is another kind of DNA present in this agrobacterium tumefacian, which is chromosomal DNA. And there are three important genes which are involved in this crown gold disease are present on this chromosomal DNA and these genes are CHVA, CHVB and PSCA. Here CHV means chromosomal virulence gene A and chromosomal virulence gene v, B. So this is a typical structure of agrobacterium tumefacient that it consists of two types of DNA. One is the plasmid DNA which is known as TI plasmid and other is the chromosomal DNA. Now, this bacteria, as I told, it causes the crown gold disease. What actually happens in this disease? So, in the crown gold disease, there is a formation of, you can say, cancer. It is, it is a kind of cancer which is generally occurs in the plants. Here, the cancerous proliferation of the stem tissue in the region of crown developed. And this crown gold disease, it usually occurs when this Ti plasmid, this Ti plasmid, when it is transferred to the plant, because this Ti plasmid contains the genes for the formation of crown galls. So, when this Ti plasmid transfer to the plant, then the disease will happen. So, that's why this Ti plasmid named. Ti means again repeating tumor inducing plasmid. Now, let's discuss about this Ti plasmid, means the various elements or the parts of this Ti plasmid will be discussed in this slide. So, here this Ti plasmid, it first element it contains is the transfer DNA or tDNA. So, this is that DNA which is transferred to the plants for causing the crown gall disease. So, this tDNA is a very important part of this Ti plasmid and there are two kind of sequences, first left border and right border. These are 24 base pair sequences and the DNA which is between these left and right border, that DNA is called as tDNA which is of 24 KB in length. So, the DNA between these left border sequences and right border sequences is called as tDNA, this is that DNA which, which is transferred to the plant cell. Next, this tDNA, it also contains certain genes which are responsible for causing the cancer to the plants or you can say for causing the crown gall disease and one of that gene is ox gene. This ox gene, it synthesizes auxin. Auxin is a plant hormone. Second gene it contains is CYT that is cytokinin gene. So due to this ox gene and CYT gene, the this Ti plasmid it forms its own auxin and cytokinins. So there will be the overproduction of auxin and cytokinin in the plant which will ultimately cause the 
can serious growth in that plant and another gene present in ti plasmid that is ocs gene means octopine synthetase gene so this octopine synthetase it makes certain opine compounds which are required for the growth of this particular agrobacterium tumefaction so what it means this tna exactly it contain three genes first auxin second cyt gene these two genes are responsible for the cancerous growth in the plant where it present and third that is ocs gene it is responsible for making the you can say opines which may be either octapine or nopalines which are required for the nutrition of this bacteria the next element present in this ti plasmid is the vir region that is virulence region this virulence region it consists of eight operons from vir a to vir h that is vir a vir b vir c d e f g and h so they are eight <clears throat> these are eight operons so virulence region consists of eight operons this is that region which help the transfer of this tdna to the plant means only tdna will be transferred to plant but it will you can say it will require the help of this virulence region that is from vir a to vir h these are eight operons beside this the next element of this ti plasmid is origin of replication which you know which is required for the replication of this ti plasmid so that it can make many copies of itself and ultimately cause the disease the last one it also contain the genes for opine catabolism because as we are saying it has the genes for the octapine synthetase when these octapines or nopalines which are the generally these are group of opines so when they will be formed ultimately there should be something there which will degrade them which will metabolize these opine compounds so for this this ti plasmid it also has the opine catabolism genes which are required for the catabolism of these opine compounds which may either be octopine or nopalline so this is the you can say complete element of this ti plasmid again repeating the most important that is the tdna which is transferred to the plant and ultimately this is that portion which will cause the you can say crown gall disease because it contain the auxin and cytokinin genes which are hormones so when this tdna will be in the plant it will make extra auxin and cytokinin which will cause the abnormal growth in the plant and ultimately responsible for the can serious growth of the plant tissue now how the crown gall disease happens or you can say what is the molecular mechanism of the transfer of this tdna from agrobacterium to plants so for first of all the first step is the signal recognition by agrobacterium so this agrobacterium tumefaciation it generally sense the or it generally recognize certain chemical sequence uh, signals due to these signals this agrobacterium attracted toward the plant so what are these signals which are recognized by agrobacterium so this is the plant whenever there any kind of cut or wound happens in the plant then there will be release of certain chemicals which you can see here in the red dots so these chemicals are acetosiringone and hydroxyacetosiringone so these are those chemicals which will be released from the wounded plant and agrobacterium will sense or will recognize these compounds as the agrobacterium it recognize these compounds so it will attracted or it will move toward that particular plant or you can say that particular wound of the plant so this is the first step that signal recognition the signal here is acetosiringone and hydroxyacetosiringone chemicals the next step is attachment of this agrobacterium to plant cell as first it recognize the signal and attracted toward the plant wound now in the next step it will attach itself to the plant cell so this is the typical plant cell and this is the agrobacterium so now it will attach itself to the 
plant cells and the attachment generally involve chromosomal genes and var a gene so chv a and chv b genes they are involved in the attachment of this agrobacterium to plant cell then in third step which is the var induction or you can say the var virulence portion it will get activated so this is the agrobacterium which contain the this portion is the agrobacterium and this is the ti plasmid and here this is the plant cell which is attached with this agrobacterium so in this var gene induction step first of all the var a it get auto phosphorylated means it attach phosphorus to itself as you can clearly see here this is the phosphorus attached to the var a protein now after auto phosphorylating itself now it will also phosphorylate this var g like this this phosphate group is now attached to the var g protein once this var g protein get activated because this phosphorylation it activate these proteins so once it get activated now it will activate the other or you can say all other var proteins like var b c d etc so this var g it induce the expression of all var genes so this step is known as the var gene induction the now the next step is t strand production as we know now the var genes these are activated so here now the t strand will be produced or you can say it will be available to transfer in the plant cell so how it is produced so first of all the var d1 and var d2 they bind to the left and the right border sequences like this here the var d1 it bind to the right border sequence and relax the supercoiling while var d2 it bind to the right border and it also you can say it also bind to the single stranded dna which will be produced by the you can say by nick creation at these right and left border sequences so due to these var d1 and d2 attachment to the left and right border now they will cleave and release the t dna strand and keep in mind single stranded t dna complex is now produced or you can say now it is formed this single stranded t dna it has bounded var d2 this var d2 it protect its this t dna from degradation now the next fifth step is the transfer of this single stranded t dna into the plant cell so how this occur generally the transfer of this plant cell is mediated through type 4 secretory system so in order to transfer this t dna into the plant cell there should be creation of pore or you can say there should be creation of a connection between this plant cell and agrobacterium through which this t dna can transfer to the plant so this is you can say this pore is formed or this channel is formed by the var b and var d4 proteins like this is the var b and var d4 proteins so these proteins they ultimately create the channel through which this t dna can move into the plant cell as you can clearly see here in the diagram the var b and var d4 they are now just created a channel or you can say a pore space from which this t dna can move into the plant cell this var b protein it has atpase activity because this step it require energy so it can it has atpase activity which provide the energy for assembly of this complex to the plant cell through which this t dna can move so as the you can say channel has been created now this t dna it is bounded by var e2 this var e2 protein it now bind t dna and act as ssbp means single strand binding protein so this e var e2 and var d2 both they protect this t dna from degradation because once it will inside the plant cell it may be degraded because it is single stranded so this is var e2 they protect this t dna from degradation now this complex that is t dna var a2 and d2 complex it can move through this channel into the plant cell as you can clearly 
C. So these were D two and A two. They protect this degradation from nucleases. Now, this is the next step. That once the T DNA is inside the plant cell. Now you can see this is the plant cell, and this is our T DNA and Ver D two and E two complex, which is now inside the plant cell. So in the next step, this T DNA will integrate itself into the plant genome so how it will integrate so this t dna it will now move to the nucleus how it will move to nucleus so this ver d2 and ver e2 proteins they also have nuclear localization signals that is nls so due to this nuclear localization signals this complex will now move to nucleus so as it move to nucleus keep in mind it is still single stranded t dna so now this single stranded t dna is converted into double stranded t dna and now this t dna is you can say it integrated itself into the plant genome and the integration you can say the integration with this plant genome is generally occur due to this illegitimate recombination process so through these steps the now t dna from agrobacterium to it travel through all this journey and now it is inside the plant genome and integrated with the plant genome so integration means now as the plant genome will uh, replicate or will express so this t dna will also express now in the next step expression of the bacterial genes because as i told the t dna it has Three genes: Ox gene, CYT gene, and OCS genes. So now the Ox gene will ultimately make the auxin within the plant because now this T DNA is inside the plant genome. This CYT gene will form the cytokinin. These two auxin and cytokinins these are the plant growth regulators. So keep in mind, plants also have their own auxins and cytokinins, and this bacterial T DNA make extra. Auxins and cytokines. So, due to these extra auxins and cytokines, now there will be imbalance between the growth regulators or growth hormones. So, due to increased level of these plant growth regulators, there will be creation of cancerous crown galls in the plant, or you can say the crown gall disease will develop. This OCS gene, as I told, it will make the opines. So, opines are again repeating. These are the these are the certain metabolites which are required for the nutrition of this bacteria. So now you can clearly see that this agrobacterium it has lots of uh, you can say it has lots of machinery which is being utilized for the creation of this crown gall disease, and it is also carrying its own its own genes which will make the opines for its nutrition means it is not going to take any nutrition from the plant it is taking its own gene for making its own metabolite so that's why this agrobacterium is also known as the you can say the nature's most effective genetic engineer so by this this agrobacterium tumevation it caused the crown gall disease so this is all about the agrobacterium and how it caused the disease so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much